Okay, so I'm gonna go through on how I design my noise gates. And uh, I've never looked in to see how anyone else designs their noise gate in any applications at all. I kind of just came up with this through theory and um, figured this should work, and it does. So I'm gonna go through on how I design my noise gates and the other uses for them other than being a gate control. So we'll start here with our guitar input and this will go into an input buffer which then goes into your effects loop. Over here we will have our noise gate which will detect the same input that this effects is seeing. Then this noise gate will go into some kind of circuit in this case, we are just going to call this a switch, and this is a normally open switch. Then this goes into an output buffer, which goes to your output. And the whole th idea that I came up with was, if your guitar is strum, tell this noise gate detects that it's being strummed and decides to close the switch and allow signal to pass through. If it's not strum, this switch opens and allows no signal to pass through. So you can have this big noisy circuit coming in right here and there's nothing getting past this point until the guitar is strummed, which triggers this noise gate and tells this switch to close. Now, inside of this noise gate, we have some kind of a buffer amplifier once again. And this goes into a comparator, which is the heart of the switch control. And it comes up to here. The way the comparator works is you have a non-inverting or inverting input and it takes your analog signal and turns it into a square wave. Depending on whether it's non-inverting or inverting, we'll decide if the state starts at high or if it starts at low. And there's a ton of tutorials on just how comparators work really, really good stuff out there because it's a very standard uh, design block in electrical engineering. So I won't go too much in the details, but keep it more exclusive for the gu guitar pedals and design there. So on this end of the comparator, you have some kind of voltage control that goes into one of these inputs and that is controlled by a potentiometer which is reference to voltage. So you can control the level at what passes through the signal. So if you wanna have your threshold set here, it'll only allow anything above this line to be set. If you wanna set it up here, it'll allow only stuff above this line to go through or vice versa, depending on if you're doing non-inverting or inverting. So if you use this voltage control, you can have all of this noise down here. And as soon as the guitar string is strung, it the magnitude goes above this threshold and it triggers one of these things to either go up or down. The output over here will always reflect the input frequency and it will be a square wave. This square wave here comes into this uh, theoretical switch, which can be um, anything you want. It could be some kind of, in some cases I use like a filter. So I'll have a filter on at all times. And as soon as guitar string gets strummed, 
we shunt that filter and go around it. Or you can have a simple JFET switch, um, a really fast uh, solid state relay. Uh, it all depends on what you're trying to do. You can also have an LED turn the light on to whenever a magnitude is hit, set, um, which is actually another thing, another application for this is you can use um, you can use multiple comparators and have them driving LEDs so you can get your magnitude level. So you can have an array of comparators. And this say this one turns on LED one, this one turns turns on LED two, but this one is at a lower threshold and this one's at a thre threshold is a little bit higher. So as this LED gets turned on first and this LED gets turned on, you can have a whole array of those. Um, another thing that I use these for is a comparator fuzz, with, because you have this input frequencies coming in here. And again, on the output, you have this square and as you pull this threshold up, less of the analog signal gets transitioned into square signals, and you get you can get this really really sputtery fuzz. Um, you can instantly hear the difference between this analog signal and this digital signal over here, and it can turn into like this really fun application. You can also use this. This is kind of the beginning stages of like a analog to digital converter. Um, this is good to feed into a modulator and demodulator. Um, it's a really fun circuit and I would suggest learning about it a little bit more. Um, there's some, like I said, once again, there's a really good sources for just on how comparators work in some electronics books. And, um, this is specifically how I use it in my guitar pedal applications with the emphasis on the noise gate. If you have any um, questions or anything, I can't really share the circuit for this because this design is kind of, this whole design down here is kind of dependent on what you're doing up here and the application that you're using. So this amplifier is gonna change, the competitor is gonna change. Do you wanna have it high? Do you wanna have it low? What are you switching? You name it, it It's uh, there's infinite number of things you do. But the basics of it is simply, to recap, you have your buffer coming through. This goes into a noise gate. And this noise gate pretty much controls whatever you want to turn on and off between the effects loop and the output. So let me know if you have any questions. Hope this helps. If you want to get into some more gritty details, um, as always, you can read the blog below and that'll uh, really, really let loose for you.